Okay, we're gonna get back into Olympia, don't worry, okay? But coding is extremely, extremely cool. And I wanted to help you guys get more into actual coding. I know that Yukiko is coding, of course, but it's a very specific subset of coding. Algorithms is like the mathy side of coding. There's a lot more stuff you could do with coding, it's crazy. Like the systems, right? You can figure out how computers work and then you could use that information to hack stuff. That's what CTFs are for, capture the flags. I've been learning how to do those. Those are really cool. And then there's the whole other side. There's app design, there's web design, there's all those other cool stuff like making things, making products. So don't be too locked in by Yuzuko, right? There's a lot more to coding than just algorithms, right? So today, we are going to be figuring out how to make coding like infinitely faster, infinitely more fun, and that's by learning Python. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Karar, and today we're going to be figuring out how to download Python on our computer and use it to prototype and run programs really, really fast. So I know, I'm a really big advocate for C++, but that's only because it's really fast to write and it's really easy to write for more complex algorithms. But Python is really good for using just as a prototyping tip. Now most of you guys probably only code for years ago, and I used to do that, I understand that. But now, like, whenever somebody asks me a question or whenever, like, I need to, like, print something, like, a billion times, I just use code. Because my strategy, you just go in terminal, you run a program, it takes, like, five seconds just to make a program. So, if you use this strategy, you'll be a lot more interested in coding because it won't, you won't have to open up REPL or you won't have to open up an IDE, then compile it, then run it. This is just a really, really fast way of doing things. So, the first step is to have this program get bash, download it on your computer. It's basically a terminal, it lets you run things, and it lets you access your files very quickly. But, the more hard part to download is Python, so let us do this. So basically what we gotta do is we gotta search up Python 3 download. Okay, very cool. Then you go to the first link, and then you go to download, we should already be on it, and then we click download here, and then we scroll down. And then we find all these cool things. So, if you're Mac, you take a Mac. No duh, okay, you better know that. And then, for Windows, there's a bunch of options. I like to do the executable installer because it does stuff for you. So then we click on this, then we wait, do not click install now. I know it's really tempting to just click install now, but that's gonna screw you over. So what we gotta do is we gotta click add Python 3 to pack. And basically what it does is it lets us run Python from terminal. And it's really, really useful because it lets you do things so much quicker. And it lets you use like any IDE you want. Because see in install now, right? It says Installs IDE, that's basically the editing tool they give you. But I personally think their IDE sucks. So, so the best way to do this is to add it to path so we can run it however we want. Alright, so click install now. Very cool. Okay, very epic. So now we're good, we close this. Now we had to go to git bash. And basically what we do, we want to check whether we have Python or not. We basically just do which Python. And hooray, it found it. Now we actually have Python on our thing. If you want to check whether Python is installed, just type which Python and I'll tell you what version it, it has. And if you don't have it, let me just give you an example. Let's just put like which Python 3. This is what happens if you don't have it. They'll say no Python 3 in this really big nonsense of nonsenses. And that's basically your path. So yeah, if this shows up, then you don't have it. But in this case, it works, right? Which Python? Very cool. We have the path. It's working. If by chance it's not working, then what you could do is you see this like um this like path right here, right? We could go to that and try to add it manually ourselves. Unfortunately, if we go directly to the thing, app data does not show up here. So we gotta do something fancy. So we click here, we do percent app data, percent, and then it takes us here. Very cool. Now you guys gotta expose all the video games that play, but what we wanna do is we wanna find where Python is stored. Now by default for some reason it put it in roaming, but we want to go to local, so we click here, we click local, and then we want to find Python. So we go to programs right here, then we go to Python, Python 3.8, and then what we want to do is we want to copy the path of this. So we click there, we command C it, very cool, and now we've got to add it to the thing that's loaded into git bash. And the way we do that is very cool. And then to do that, all you got to do is you do windows edit system environment variables, very cool. And then you click here and see these are all the things so what we want to change is we want to go to path we want to edit this so we click edit and we basically click new and then we control v it and hooray we've added it to the path very cool and you can see i already have it in the path because python added it automatically for me but if you didn't have it then you got to do this so i'll just delete it because i already made my own okay so now Python should be working. Alright, epic. So our Python is in its right place. Very cool. So now we can actually run programs really, really quickly without actually having to make a new file or like open an IDE. So let's say that I want to just, I don't even want to make a file, I just want to run a program. So what we could do is we could do Python I. And what that does is it opens something called the interpreter. And this is really cool because what you could do 
If you can just type command, so three plus five, eight. What happens if I want to make a, like uh what a for loop for i is in range like five print or print what what should I print? Karar is epic, why not? <laughs> Bro, I missed it. God dang it. Okay, let's try again. I forgot the last quote, that's so sad. And then boom, it printed five times. You can do anything really, really quickly. So let's say that you wanted to annoy your friend and you wanted to like copy and paste something into your messages like really quickly. What you could do is you could do the same strategy, I in range 100, and then you could do print you suck, and then we go like that. You go over here, you copy and paste this whole nonsense, and then you go over into your tab and you paste it, and then you click enter. And hooray, you sent a hundred, okay, we should probably not look at all this nonsense, but you sent a hundred you sucks to your friend, and very cool. You can't do control C or any of the nonsense terminal stuff that you learned before, you just do quit, and then you do that. Epic. Now let's say you wanted to actually save these files that you've been working on. So the fastest way is to use terminal, right? Like, the way I like to do it is let me go to the folder I want. So the way you get to the folder you want is you do pwd to figure out which folder you're already in. Then you have to do cd into the folder that you want. If you want a relative path, you don't put a slash. So we want to go to documents and then we'll make a directory for test projects. Do not ever use spaces in your name. It's really bad for terminal. Don't use spaces in your folder name. And don't worry, if you guys don't understand any of the stuff I'm doing on terminal, I'll make a terminal video soon because it's extremely important you understand how to use terminal. But then if I want to make a Python file really quick, let's do vim like is prime maybe. And then let's quickly code up a Python thing. If you want to type in this, you can do i. And then we'll do def is prime and I'll write this out. Okay, and then once you're done, all you got to do is you click escape colon wq. Just remember that. Escape colon wq to exit this thing. Epic. And then we want to run it. So we just do python is, and then if you want to autocomplete tab, <laughs> whoops. No, I messed up my indentation, so then you go back to Vim. God dang it. And then all we gotta do is do Python is prime, and then we'll blame them. In five minutes, I already have a prime number finder. Very cool, look at that epicness. Let's go. Now, you probably don't know how to use Vim, and you could learn. There's something called Vim Tutor, just search it up. But, like, the fastest way to do it is just using VS Code or Virtual Studio Code. I don't really like the ID that Python gives because it's just kind of bad, so let's just make our own. Visual Studio Code. All right, download, download for Windows, accept the agreement, do all this stuff, very cool. All right, so I told it to launch Visual Studio Code and we get this stuff. This is a cool snake, uh, this is a dino game we made before, but what we could do is let's say we closed it. Now, let's go from here, so let's stop our thing with Control C. Stop our thing with Control D, can we quit? Why can't we quit? Okay, so basically what I did is I closed it and now it should work. Okay. Oh, whoops. Whoops, I accidentally made the file in document. So if we wanted to move it into the folder we made earlier, we could take move and then what we call it is prime. And then we want to move it into our other thing, which is code, testing code, test project. Okay. And hooray. So now let's CD into the test project. And now if we want to open it in Virtual Studio Code really quickly, code dot. And holy moly, it opened it up perfectly. Very cool. So now we have it, we can edit it however we want. It's really easy to edit it here. And then what we could do is we could go over here. We could find our Python extension. We install it over here. All right, very cool. And then we should probably name this uh, py file. And very cool. It recognizes the Python and we are good to go. So if we wanted to run this thing, we go to new terminal right here and we just do Python and then it's prime. And very cool. Oh my god, this is crazy stuff. And then if we want to end it, control C. Very cool. And VS Code even lets you run and debug. So you literally click run over here, you click Python over here, and oh, blammo, it ran over here. Very cool. One, two, three, four, five. Very cool. And if you want to stop it, well, blammo. Visual Studio Code is the best thing. Use it for everything. Literally. Okay, that's all you got to do to set up your Python. There's so many different ways to use it, and it's just such a fast way to like code stuff up really quickly without even thinking about it. Hope that was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Once again, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.